Hi students. Students, we have learned earlier that all organisms need food, water and oxygen for survival. Isn't it? Yes. They also need to transport all these to various parts of their body. Further, animals need to transport wastes to parts from where they can be removed. So students, have you ever wondered how all this is achieved? How all these substances are carried out in our body? Well, in circulatory system of our body, we see the heart and the blood vessels. They function to transport substances and together form the circulatory system. So, in today's session, we are going to learn about the transport of substances in animals and plants. We'll also see that what kind of substances are there in our body which are transported and which are necessary to be transported. So students, let us start with today's interesting session and learn about transport of substances in animals and plants. So students, this is our session one in which we are going to study about transport of substances. Students, before studying about transport of substances, I would like to share something that we learned about respiration in living organisms in the previous uh, sessions. So there are other body processes too that are equally important. An organ inside our body beats up real fast while we are running. So can we identify the organ? Yes. Well, you need to think about it. The air taken in while breathing needs to reach every nook and corner of our body. This is where circulation comes in and our heart plays a very important role in it. Even plants and other organisms have their own way of transporting substances within their bodies. Besides air, there are other substances that also need to be transported in a living body. So you see, students, that there are various methods by which plants and animals transport materials inside their body. Our body generates a number of waste products while carrying out its various functions. So these need to be removed regularly or it will harm the body. So this is the task of the excretory system. So in this lesson, we will study about circulatory system and excretory system as well. But... Before stepping up to the excretory system, let us first learn something about the transport of substances. Yes, students, the process of transport of substances is very important in a living body. This ensures that the different organ systems of the living organism work efficiently. So basically, there are many such substances which needs to be transported in the living body because this will ensure that the different organ systems of the living organism work efficiently. So students, let us see what substances or which substances are there to be transported which needs to be transported in the body. Yes, the following are some of the substances that need to be transported. So first of all is the food. Food to all the cells where it will be broken down or oxidized for the release of energy. So food is one such substance which needs to be transported because it breaks down, the food breaks down into smaller molecules, sorry, smaller or smaller components for the release of energy. Second substance which needs to be transported in a living body is oxygen which is required for the oxidation process. After these two substances comes the third substance which needs to be transported and which is very important and that is water and minerals. Water and minerals which are required for proper functioning of the body of an organism. And lastly, waste products. Waste products formed as a result of life activities which needs to be removed from the cells and the body. So. All these substances are very important because they play a very important inevitable role in our body and they all need to be transported. So students, mainly oxygen is transported by the main system which is the 
circulatory system in which red blood cells play a very important role. They contain a special pigment known as hemoglobin. And this pigment plays an important part in the transport of oxygen by the red blood cells. So, students remember when blood passes through the lungs, oxygen is diffused from the lungs to the blood and the oxygen is then transported by red blood cells to other parts of the body. And along the way, as it passes the other cells, it gives up the oxygen to these cells which are undergoing respiration. How amazing our system is, right? Students, the main transport system used in transporting carbon dioxide is the blood plasma. Carbon dioxide is produced by the cells during respiration as a waste product. So as we discussed that waste products are formed as a result of life activities which also needs to be removed from the cells and the body. So carbon dioxide is a waste product which is produced by the cells during respiration as a waste product. So what happens that the gas diffuses through the capillary walls and it gets back into the blood. So when the blood plasma carry most of the dissolved carbon dioxide back to the lungs, in the lungs carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood and is expelled out with the exhaled air. Besides oxygen and carbon dioxide, the blood also transports the digested food, hormones and urea. So all these substances are very inevitable and they need to be transported in our body, right? So that it can ensure that different organ systems of the living organism is working very efficiently, right? So that was all about, sorry, all about the transport of substances. Now let us study about the new topic, a very important topic in today's session, and it is the transport in animals. Yes, transport in animals. Students, in unicellular animals such as amoeba and paramecium, no spatial transport system is required. So here you can see the beautiful picture of an amoeba and paramecium. Students, other than these unicellular animals, there are other organisms or animals too. Like every part of the organism get nu gets nutrients and oxygen directly through cell diffusion. So students, you need to understand the definition of diffusion. It is the movement of molecules or gases from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. And cell diffusion means Cell diffusion is also the movement of molecules from a region in which they are highly concentrated to a region where they are less concentrated. Means it depends on the motion of the molecules and it continues until the system in which the molecules are found that reaches a state of equilibrium which means that the molecules are randomly distributed throughout the system. So this is cell diffusion. So remember students that every part of the organism gets nutrients and oxygen directly through cell diffusion. Like in Hydra, water transports food and oxygen to all parts of the body and takes body wastes away from the different organs for excretion. So this is beautiful picture of Hydra. This is not the unicellular organism but the multicellular organism. But in unicellular animals or unicellular organisms, no spatial transport system is required. Well, in other multicellular organisms, the transportation is done by a specialized system known as circulatory system. So here is a beautiful diagram of human circulatory system. So what is it? Yes, it is the human circulatory system because human beings 
they come under the multicellular organisms or whether or rather we can say that they are multicelled right so here you can see the beautiful structure of heart and here you can see the two kidneys right and the red one which is running out throughout the body is the artery and the blue one is the vein so basically circulatory system consists of artery veins arteries veins that are the blood vessels it also consists of the heart right so this is circulatory system so remember students that in multicellular organisms the transportation is done by specialized system they are unlike unicellular animals which have which do not have any special transport system right so unlike unicellular organisms humans or multicellular organisms have specialized circulatory system it consists of the heart arteries veins and capillaries this is we are talking about human beings it also forms a broad network which carries blood to all the parts of the body so here blood is the medium for transport of all the necessary materials to different parts of the body so remember students that transport in animals or unicellular or multicellular animals takes place in this these ways right so the importance of transport of substances in animals is that exchange of materials takes place with external environment materials are taken in they are distributed around the body waste is produced waste which is produced is removed out of the body products are moved to various sites for use diffusion process takes place remember students what is diffusion it is the movement of molecules or gases from a region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration even the transport in animals the transport of substances in animals also depends upon the surface area to volume ratio means large surface area to volume ratio for smaller organisms is there for example in protozoa algae or flatworm whereas larger organisms have smaller surface area to volume ratio that is the distance between cells and external environment increases and the fusion therefore is inefficient in larger organisms but in smaller organisms there is large surface area and so the diffusion process is more efficient in them as we discussed that in organisms such as amoeba and paramecium the organism gets nutrients and oxygen directly through cell diffusion so cell diffusion is more efficient in unicellular animals or organisms there is one more important thing about the substances which are transported in animals is that about the spatial absorptive sur surfaces for example spatial absorptive surfaces in animals means for example in some animals there are gills some have lungs some have alimentary canals some have leaves some have roots leaves and roots like in plants so distribution of materials rapidly through transport systems means that between the cells and spatial absorb absorptive structures between the parts of the body there is distribution of materials which takes place rapidly through these transport systems one more thing which is important in the transport system is the fluid medium like in human beings there is blood blood is the medium for transport of all the necessary materials to different parts of the body like in plants there are conducting structures like xylem and phloem like in other animals there are mechanisms for maintaining flow so transport system actually carries useful materials like gases nutrients hormones other substances wastes like carbon dioxide harmful materials like toxins heat in active tissues respiration by product and other reactions 
temperature control, enzyme activity effects. So all these are carried out by the transport system of a body. You will be very amazed to know that small organisms exchange materials efficiently by diffusion and larger organisms have smaller surface area to volume ratios so diffusion is a slow process in larger organisms. There are some features of absorptive structures as we discussed like gills, lungs, elementary canal etc. So they have high surface area to volume ratio. They are permeable to substances which pass through them and they are kept moist because they have rich supplies of transport tissues like blood or something, some other medium in other animals. In transport, in plants, transportation medium is cell sap, water and mineral ions. In human beings, there is blood. In plants, the transport system, sorry, transport system in the form of tubes are xylem and phloem, while in human beings, there are blood vessels like arteries, veins and capillaries. So, this is all about the transport in animals. So, we are done, we are through with transport in animals. Now, we will study about the other very interesting topic and that is transport in humans. So, let us study about it. Yes, students, transport in humans. Students, Humans have a very well-developed and efficient circulatory system. It consists of blood, blood vessels, which are further of three kinds, like arteries, veins and capillaries. And it also consists of a thick muscular organ called the heart. So students, have you ever gave a thought that what happens when you get a cut on your body? Blood flows out. But what is blood? Yes, blood is the fluid which flows in blood vessels. It transports substances like digested food from the small intestine to the other parts of the body. It carries oxygen from the lungs to the cells of the body. And it also transports waste for removal from the body. So how does the blood carry various substances? Well, blood is a liquid which has cells of various kinds suspended in it and the fluid part of the blood is called plasma. So let us now study about blood in detail and let us see that what kind of blood vessels or what is there which is present in blood which makes it so important. Yes. Blood is a fluid that flows in blood vessels. As we discussed that blood vessels are of three kinds, arteries, veins and capillaries. So blood is the fluid that flows in the arteries, veins and capillaries. It forms a medium through which nutrients, important gases, water and waste products are transported inside the organism. So it basically constitutes about 8% of the body weight. So remember students that blood consists of several cells floating in a straw colored liquid called plasma. As we discussed that, what is plasma? Yes, the fluid part of the blood is called plasma which is of straw colored. So these cells which are present in the blood are of three types. Red blood cells, popularly called as RBCs, white blood cells, shortly called as WBCs, and blood platelets. Students, one function of the circulatory system is to transport substances around the body in the blood. And blood consists of a fluid called plasma which contains white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets, right? So many substances are transported and dissolved in the plasma like carbon dioxide from the organs to the lungs, soluble products of digestion from the small intestine to other organs and urea from the liver to kidneys. 
So basically, white blood cells form the part of the body's defense system against microorganisms. Platelets are fragments of cells. Platelets help blood to clot at the site of the wound. Red blood cells transport oxygen from the lungs to the organs and they are packed with a red pigment called hemoglobin. In the lungs, oxygen combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin and in other organs, the oxygen is released as the oxyhemoglobin splits up into oxygen and hemoglobin. So, this is just the introduction to all the cells which are present in the plasma. And plasma is a part of the fluid called blood. So I hope you are clear with this. Now let us see one beautiful diagram of the artery which contains all these cells. Right? It is basically an artery here which you can see red colored artery and here you can see the white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets. So red blood cell is largest one then comes the white blood cells which have one or the two nucleus they are of various types which we will we'll be studying in the further classes or the higher grades and platelets are the smallest one so just keep in mind that these are the structures of white blood cells platelets and red blood cells now we will study about each of them in detail. So students, this is the beautiful picture of red blood cells. Red blood cells are flat and disc-like in shape with a depression in the center. Can you see here? There is a depression in the center. Means it is not swollen. Remember students that the adult human body contains blood which is composed of a fluid called plasma in which there are suspended microscopic cells of these three kinds, the red blood cells. So red blood cells form nearly half the volume of the blood with about 6 million red blood cells in every milliliter of an adult's blood. They transport oxygen around the body and oxygen is absorbed into the millions of blood capillaries surrounding the tiny air sacs of the lungs and is carried in the blood by hemoglobin, which is a red pigment. So it is a red pigment which is present within the red blood cells. So students remember this, that red blood cells contain the red pigment called hemoglobin. And this hemoglobin combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. Remember students that hemoglobin plus oxygen yields oxyhemoglobin which then helps in transporting oxygen throughout the body. Right? So this is about red blood cells. Remember that red blood cells contain a red pigment which then binds with oxygen and transports it to all the parts of the body and ultimately to all the cells. It will be difficult to provide, it is actually difficult to provide oxygen efficiently to all the cells of the body without hemoglobin. So the presence of hemoglobin makes blood appear red. Remember this. Now that was all about red blood cells. Now let us discuss about white blood cells. Yes. Students, this is a very beautiful picture of white blood cell. Here you can see a white colored picture with all the red blood cells surrounding it. So this is a beautiful picture of white blood cell. 
white blood cells are larger than RBCs. As we saw in the previous diagram, that white blood cells, they were looking smaller, they appeared to be smaller than RBCs. But actually, the fact is that white blood cells are larger than RBCs. But they do not have hemoglobin. So remember that white blood cells are larger than RBCs. But they do not have hemoglobin like RBCs. So they move actively and protect the body against disease causing microorganisms by destroying the microorganisms. So basically white blood cells are of various kinds. Some phagocytes ingest invading bacteria and so protect the body from diseases. And they also help to repair injured tissues whenever we are wounded. Other blood cells, white blood cells produce antibodies which help to provide immunity by binding to disease causing bacteria and destroying them. Yet, others can also kill cells which are infected by viruses. So basically, white blood cells protect the body against disease causing microorganisms like bacteria, viruses and other organisms or other harmful organisms. Right? So remember that other than RBCs, the blood has also WBCs, which fight against germs or harmful pathogens that may enter our body. Now once a child f fall down while playing a game and his knee got injured and blood was coming out from the cut. After some time, he noticed that bleeding had stopped and a dark red clot had plugged the cut. So, this child was puzzled about it. So, why was he puzzled? What was the dark red clot which plugged the cut? Let us find it out. Let us see. Yes, it is all about the blood platelets. Remember students, whenever we have cut on our body, blood comes out. But it stops bleeding after some time. This is all due to the presence of blood platelets. This is a beautiful picture of blood platelets, right? And remember students that blood platelets are colorless. Now, as we discussed that a boy was puzzled, the child was puzzled that how this dark red clot had plugged the cut. It happened due to the presence of blood platelets in the blood. Blood platelets are colorless, they are smaller than RBCs and WBCs, they are irregularly shaped and much, much smaller than RBCs as well as WBCs because WBCs are already, they are larger than RBCs. So anything which is smaller than RBCs is obviously smaller than WBC too, right? So the clot is formed because of the presence of the blood platelets. Remember that blood platelets assist in the clotting of blood. Blood cells constantly wear out and die and they are replaced from the bone marrow. Red blood cells die at the rate of 200 billion per day, but the body produces new cells at an average rate of 9,000 million per hour. So how amazing it is. So students, there are many different substances which are transported by the blood around the body. And the blood transports these nutrients to the cells of the body. So the transportation medium in the human body is blood and a part of blood is called plasma which consists of these suspended cells which are RBCs, WBCs and blood platelets. So students I would like to share one more thing with you 
that there was a scientist in the 15th century named William Harvey, which was born in Kent in 1578, and he was the first to propose in 1628 the complete theory of circulation of blood, believing that it was pushed through the body by the heart's contractions. So we will definitely study about the human heart in the coming sessions. Till then, I hope that you enjoyed today's session, you liked this session, and you learned much about the transport of substances in animals and human body. So, we will meet in the next session with a new topic. Till then, keep learning, keep enjoying, and have fun. Thank you.